Hi everyone, I'm back and today the topic for discussion is the new nurse and emergency room experience. Uh, some new nurses are being thrust into the emergency room and it's really one, a place, it's nice to learn but it's very tough if you don't know how to do the right thing. And some people just don't want to be there but it does not hurt to learn the right thing. Here we have a patient with a spinal injury. Sarah was ex uh, enjoying ice skating when she had her own experience where she fell and broke her spine. Now she's on a backboard and she's brought into the emergency room. There's a cervical collar around her neck. I talked about the golden hour before which is Dr. Adam Cowley's uh, which he defined as the most crucial hour when everything you do revolves around that one golden hour, airway management being very important. Anyhow, this patient is brought into the emergency room. She's got a spinal injury. It's very important when you have a patient with a spinal injury, they keep a, a collar on, a cervical collar. And these patients are not usually just turned carelessly. They have to be aligned and log rolled very gently because any injury to the spinal cord can cook to the bones, I mean around the spinal cord, can increase injury to the actual cord. Here I've given you the spinal column, the vertebra C1, C7. Usually the higher the injury in the spinal column, the worse it gets. Like C1 to C3 is where you get difficulty breathing. And then it just goes on and on. And if you take the time to go to dearnurses.net, the clinical settings step by step, I shift in the ER, there's tons more helpful information. And in that very book, there's lots of information on uh, stuff about the spine. And also, um, what is it at dearnurses.net will help you with this very situation. So here is this patient, and what do they normally do? One of the treatments that's offered for these people because of the swelling is methylprednisone. Sometimes used, they put, put an, it's an IV regime which is used for 23 hours to reduce that swelling on the spine. And it does work, depends. Some people are more badly injured than others. Some people come through after spinal injuries very well. Some people don't. And some people are so broken after a spinal injury that that may even impact healing. I talk, want to talk about about fall prevention because fall prevention let's take the spinal injured patient when that patient is in the ICU on the floor can very readily fall being very defenseless so here I give you uh, uh, for your care plan two examples we've got this one patient on the left involved in a car accident have physical therapy learning to walk again she is a fall risk then we have this other patient she has a prosthetic leg on the left side she had an above knee amputation following a car accident she also is a fall risk and we can go on and on there are many patients who are fall risk I worked in ICU for many years and we had all bed rails went up because we medicated our patients with especially trauma patients we'd have them on drips to sedate them and stuff we could not afford to have bed rails down so depending on where you work I think some of you are don't have to but we used to have bed rails up at all times now let's talk about the Braden scale. The Braden scale is used for preventing pressure ulcers and I know some people work in areas where you have very mobile patients and I gave the example of the air hostess, not the air hostess, the person who's sitting on a long flight when she feels fed up of sitting down she can take the time to get up and walk but the stroke patient or other bed patients confined to bed are not that lucky so if we're not careful and we don't take the time to turn them good body alignment soft booties like they put on their feet adequate nutrition also has a hand in this they may develop pressure sores I don't know what they do where you work and it's not my business to tell you what to do but what we used to do we used to any skin breakdown we used to get the camera out and take a picture and we had a special form we filled out and just followed the instructions day by day to make sure that it didn't get any worse because we had patients like those in liver failure and so who were more prone to liver to skin breakdown trauma patients who had really bad injuries who were more prone to skin breakdown so it may not be the situation where you work but the Braden scale is usually done wherever you work have a great day hope you've enjoyed learning